Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about immigration. So, as I mentioned, uh, I'm not gonna uh, try to uh, present all of my uh, thoughts and opinions, uh, my stance on this. Uh, your stance uh, refers to your position, uh, what you believe about some topic. So, I'm not gonna present my stance here, some political stance. No, don't worry. <laughs> I don't have a political stance. Like I mentioned, I don't really have a strong opinion about this. But I want to talk about it because it's always a topic that uh, people discuss in politics uh, and just among uh, each other here in the US. So first, I want to make it clear that when people talk about immigration in the US, uh, they could be talking about two different things. They could be talking about legal immigration or illegal immigration. And it's really important to understand this distinction because I think many people uh, in other countries, when uh, they hear about this topic in the US, uh, they don't make this distinction. Uh, they don't understand if what's being discussed is uh, regarding illegal or legal immigration. And I remember uh, when I was living in Mexico and I was talking to a student of mine and I don't remember what country they were from, but this student asked me uh, where I lived and I told him that I lived in Mexico. And then he asked me, wait, is it going to be hard for you to go back to the US now because of the big border wall that they're building? <laughs> and I laughed. Um, maybe I shouldn't have, uh, but I laughed because it was hilarious to me that this person thought that me, uh, a US citizen, uh, that I would have trouble going back to the United States because of a wall being built. Uh, you can see that they had a very uh, different idea about what uh, this wall was than uh, what it was in reality, right? Obviously, there's not a big wall that keeps every single person out uh, U.S. citizens, legal residents, and just no one can enter into the country. Of course not. <laughs> that's not what this is about. So uh, that's an example I can think of of someone who uh, doesn't really um, get the distinction between um, topics related to legal and illegal immigration, because obviously a border wall would not uh, keep legal immigrants out or uh, citizens out. Uh, that wouldn't have uh, an effect on that because uh, that's not what the border wall is meant for, right? It's not meant for legal immigrants or for US citizens uh, to not be able to enter into the country again, right? So. I want to really clarify that uh, and I want to talk about legal immigration first and then illegal immigration. So legal immigration sucks. <laughs> Let me just say it bluntly. Um, when we use the word blunt, uh, when I say something bluntly, I'm saying it very honestly in kind of uh, not a pretty or nice way. I'm being blunt. And to be blunt, uh, legally immigrating to the US sucks. Uh, if you don't live in the country currently, if you live in the country, it can still suck, but maybe less because you're already in the country, maybe as a tourist. 
uh, or a student or maybe you're uh, in the country and you get married to uh, an American citizen, a US citizen, uh, and then uh, you are adjusting your status uh, to become a resident. Uh, that still isn't fun, but at least you're in the US living there while the process is happening. But if you don't live in the US and you're applying from abroad, from some other country, it's a long, terrible process. I know this uh, because my wife did this. <laughs> we lived in Mexico when we did this and it took multiple years uh, to finish this process even though my wife was married to me at the time. She was married to a US citizen but it still took us a long time to legalize her so that she could live here. Uh, many people are surprised when they hear that, uh, when I tell them that. They assume that if you marry a US citizen, you can get residency pretty fast, uh, even if you live abroad at the time. But no, it doesn't work like that. That's why I say that this process sucks, because if you're not in the country, and especially if you're doing this residency uh, process because you got married to a US citizen, then this process can keep you apart from your spouse, for example. Maybe he or she lives in the US and you live in a different country and you're just waiting to get approved so you can go and live in the US with them. It, that situation is terrible. It really is. Thankfully, when I did this, when my wife did this, uh, I lived in Mexico with her, obviously. So we were together. But many times people don't do this. The US citizen still lives in the US. Uh, and then the spouse lives abroad and they're separated uh, during this process and the US citizen has to travel uh, to go see their spouse once in a while and it's not fun. Uh, and so this whole legal process is long, it's bureaucratic, it's hard, um, it seems like it's something a lot harder and longer than it should be, particularly if you got married to a citizen. Obviously, I'm talking uh, about that in particular because that's my case, but obviously people do this process uh, for different reasons, not just because they married a citizen, right? Uh, but if that's the case, then it's probably even worse <laughs> wading through this process. And in general, uh, people in the US uh, don't feel as negatively about uh, legal immigrants, uh, of course, uh, as they do about illegal immigrants. Because, of course, there's a huge political debate about immigration uh, and about uh, illegal immigration in particular, illegal immigrants in the US. Um, but I think that yes, there are some people that still uh, feel negatively about uh, how many immigrants come to the US legally, but I don't think that's the majority of the people here. I think uh, most people don't have a big problem with legal immigration, uh, they're more concerned about illegal immigration, right? So legal immigration is uh, a long process. Uh, a lot of people hire lawyers to help them with this. Uh, we didn't, but a lot of people do this. They have to wait and pay a lot of money and uh, they have to do a lot of things 
and uh, comply with all of these rules and then eventually, hopefully, they become uh, a legal resident in the US. Um, but as you can see, it's not fast and easy and of course that might cause some people to uh, illegally immigrate because of how hard and long it seems to do it legally. So I'm sure that that pushes some people to just try to do it illegally instead. So let's talk about illegal immigration. So this can happen in a number of ways. Some people can enter the US illegally uh, by crossing the desert in the north of Mexico. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this in movies or heard about this where people are crossing uh, this desert in the north of Mexico. Uh, sometimes they hire uh, people who we call uh, coyotes, coyotes in English. These people that smuggle uh, people across the border. When you smuggle someone or smuggle something somewhere, you are taking it illegally or taking them illegally to some place. So people might hire someone to smuggle them across the border or people might do this uh, on their own and uh, they might swim across the river that divides the country. And this is a dangerous process. It can be really dangerous to cross uh, the desert and try to enter the US like that um, on foot. Uh, that's uh, really hard and you can imagine that many people don't make it. In other words, they don't actually arrive uh, to the border or to the US. So that's one way uh, that people can come illegally uh, across the border. And maybe a more common way I don't have the numbers here, so I can't say for sure if this is more common or not, but I'm guessing a more common way is for people to get a tourist visa or maybe a student or work visa or something like that uh, for the US and then they come to the US and then they just stay forever instead of going back home. Uh, before their visa expires. And this is something that can be tempting for people to do if they're already in the US and they just need to stay. <laughs> they don't need to go anywhere. They can just stay. Of course, life can get complicated after that because they're uh, not there legally anymore, but they can make it work uh, many times. When you make something work, we're saying that you um, make it uh, happen or succeed or uh, go okay, right? You make it work. So you can make it work. And so that's a temptation that some people have uh, to overstay their visa, as we would say. Uh, and maybe just stay forever. So that's another way. And another way that people might immigrate illegally is by faking a marriage, meaning they get married to someone, but they're not actually acting like a husband and wife. They're just doing it legally to have the papers and then they don't even know each other and don't care about each other. They don't live together or anything like that. The foreigner pays the US citizen uh, to get married to them and then that's how they do it. This might sound pretty strange to you, but I've met people that have done this. I had a student that did this and he told me all about it how he was living 
illegally in the US um, because of his fake marriage, right? So this can happen. That's another way. And one other way that people might come illegally, and this is probably a little strange for a lot of you to hear, is that some people are just allowed to enter illegally, even though they don't have uh, a legal document to enter, uh, they might be allowed to cross into the US. And uh, this is something that I think we don't hear a lot about, but I know that it happens because I've seen reports of this uh, where many people are just allowed into the US even though they don't have a document uh, to um, show that they have permission. And then usually uh, when they cross, they are assigned some type of court date where they have to go to court and uh, maybe discuss their case of why they should be allowed into the US or I don't know exactly, uh, but something like that. Um, but of course, <laughs> it would be easy for people to just ignore this and just go into the US and then live their life. So that happens actually. Uh, so uh, these are some different ways that people uh, immigrate to the US without doing the legal process, right? And of course, there's a big debate about this. You've probably heard this before. Uh, some people are really against illegal immigration. Some people uh, are not against it. Some people are in the middle. Uh, a lot of people have an opinion about this. Uh, and of course, some of the things uh, that people don't like about this is that uh, illegal immigrants uh, might be able to uh, live their life here without paying things like income tax or things like that uh, if they're working under the table, which means that they're working uh, in an informal way. Uh, they're getting paid in cash maybe and there's no record of their labor. So maybe they don't need to pay taxes on the money that they're earning, for example. Some people still do, probably, uh, but some people maybe know. Uh, obviously, people always get scared about uh, jobs being taken, right? That foreigners will take their jobs uh, or that there are criminals coming in or that people don't assimilate to uh, US culture. Uh, assimilate means that you kind of adapt to become part of that culture. So people don't like uh, when people come and don't assimilate. So obviously there are uh, a lot of different reasons why people might not like this. And then some people uh, might disagree and they might want uh, people to be able to come um, if they want to work and have a good life and uh, help their families out and people might think that it's good to let people uh, come in um, regardless of where they're from or their level of education or whatever. Um, some people think that uh, it's better for people to come and uh, it's not a problem, so to say. So there are two uh, different sides, two different perspectives, of course. So that's a little bit about illegal immigration. And to close uh, this controversial episode, which I hope isn't too controversial for you, uh, I wanted to mention again that I honestly don't have a strong opinion about this issue. I'm not just saying that because I don't want to offend people. I honestly don't have a strong opinion about this. I think <laughs> if I try to form an opinion, I guess I would say that 
I want people to be able to come here if those people、uh, come with good intentions and follow the rules and at least try to adapt and、uh, you know just want to come to、um, have a better life. I want those people to come, but of course, I don't want people to come. Who are bad people and who are criminals, or who will abuse the system, take advantage of the system, or whatever. I think a lot of people would say this, and it's not a very political opinion. I think it's just me talking about what I wish would happen. I don't know how that could happen. <laughs> I don't know of a process、uh, that would、um, perfectly. Uh, discriminate against bad people who want to do bad things, and also allow all the people with good intentions to come in. I don't know. I'm just expressing an opinion because you probably want me to give an opinion about this. But I honestly don't have a strong political opinion about this. So I just wanted to talk about this issue in general. This will always be a debate. Uh, I don't think this debate will end ever, and this is a debate in many countries.、Uh, maybe in your country where you are,、um, this might be a political debate there too, about、um, what to do about、uh, illegal immigration, let's say.、Um, but just remember、uh, when you hear things、uh, regarding this in the U.S. That there's a distinction between legal and illegal immigration.、Um, it's important to know what's being discussed. If they're talking about a big wall,、uh, they're talking about illegal immigration, right? If they're talking about green cards or visas or things like that, then they're talking about legal immigration. So there are two different topics here, right? So. I think that's it for today. <laughs> I won't talk any more about this. That's pretty much、uh, a general overview of this topic, and I'm sure、uh, a lot of you have stronger opinions than I do <laughs> about this,、uh, and that's okay.、Uh, and of course, I hope this episode was helpful for your listening,、uh, and that、uh, you're starting to、uh, understand more English、uh, from listening to these episodes. And I hope you're learning a lot of new words. And if you want to practice with my advanced episodes, you can also do that by becoming a Listening Time family member.、Uh, as I mentioned before, the link to my membership is down below in the episode description. And if you feel ready to practice、uh, listening to two people talking instead of just one, then make sure to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast. It's a lot of fun. You'll really enjoy those conversations that I have with other English teachers from around the country. The link is also down below. That's Patreon.com/slash/USConversations. And as always, please give this podcast a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and write a review and share it with any English learners that you know. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.